some good news in a moment we at the lead have all been waiting for. The lead has been following the story of U.S. Navy officer Lieutenant Ridge Alconis since he was sent to a Japanese prison for a car accident that tragically killed two people and injured another in May of 2021. Alconis was driving with his wife and three children from Mount Fuji when he lost consciousness after suffering acute mountain sickness. Though he paid the family restitution and cooperated, Lieutenant Alconis and his supporters say he was dealt with more harshly for this tragic accident than he might have been had he not been an American. His wife, Brittany Alconis, worked tirelessly to advocate to bring him home. Back in December, Ridge was released by Japan, only to be sent to a federal prison in Los Angeles. Now he is finally out and back home. And Lieutenant Ridge Alconis and his wife, Brittany, join us now. It's great to see you, Lieutenant. Uh, we should note you're still in the service with all that entails. What is it like to be home, out of prison, with your wife and kids? Well, first and foremost, I, I am still active duty. And so, therefore, the, what I say today is, in our, my opinions alone, and do not represent those of the, of the Navy, the Department of Defense, or the U.S. government as a whole, but... The feelings are indescribable, and honestly, I haven't found words for them all. You know, since the, from the moment the accident took place, my number one priority was to take care as best I could of those that, that were hurt as, as part of the accident. And, you know, that, that feeling has not wavered at all. And I still carry that with me today. But yeah. being home is, is incredible. Doing things like taking my kids to school, making them breakfast in the morning, Teaching my son how to surf have been true joys. And I think it's important to, to, to underline what you just said, because no one is diminishing the, the horrible tragedy that took place uh, during that accident. Um, just the question is, given the facts of the case, whether you were dealt with as a, a Japanese person would be dealt with in a similar situation, Right. You know, I don't feel comfortable speculating on whether or not I was treated fairly or unfairly fairly, fairly by the Japanese judicial system. But I will say that those that supported me while I navigated that process were incredible. And without the unwavering support of my friends, families, loved ones, various government entities, that it would have been exponentially harder than it, than it was. Brittany? Here's the moment. I told you it was going to happen. I told you you were going to get him back. Uh, you, your, yeah. your advocacy for him is, has been incredible. How is it for him to be back uh, in your arms, playing with your kids? Um, it's incredible. It's incredible. Friday morning, I drove the kids to school. We pulled up, we were getting out, and I got the phone call to drive to MDC in LA. And so I yelled at all the kids to get back in the car. Um, seeing him walk out those those doors was, it was a moment that I thought would never happen. Uh, it, it was surreal when it did, but I don't know, I whenever, they come home from deployment, you know, there's always that reintegration period. And I thought to myself what that would be like. Um, and it was so much better, so much better. Somehow a year and a half went by with him in prison and he's back home and it feels like nothing happened. And Ridge, uh, how are the kids other than teaching your son to surf? What, what else have you and the family been doing? Everything that you would want to do with your own children. We walk the dog, uh, we cook dinner together, we eat together, we, we play catch out in the yard. It just feels good to, to fulfill my primary responsibility as a husband and a father. And again, that's what I missed the most when I was gone. I know you would never go through that ordeal again, but do you think what you went through will make you appreciate freedom more, appreciate life more in a, I mean, obviously I don't, I'm not happy that you went through it, but is there, is there any sort of enhanced new way of looking at the world? Oh, for sure. I mean, the, the moment I went into prison, I, I was focused on making sure that it, it wasn't all negative, that it wasn't just a traumatic experience that I had to endure 
that I was that I would that I needed to find something that made it made me better. And some of it is what you spoke of, just a mindset and, and an appreciation of life, liberty, and a pursuit of and the pursuit of happiness. And other things that are more concrete. I mean, I worked in the in the prison tailor shop, and now I can sew. And I look <laughs> forward to making clothes for myself and my family. And and yeah, and I'm I'm glad that I was able to do that. That I was able to find something tangible to bring home that is positive. And and Brittany, all told, what has this ordeal been like for you and the kids? Um. It's been awful. You know, I, I'm not going to um, underplay that. It, it's been awful. But like Rich said, we've had so many people helping us. Um, you know, my, my pace of life has changed dramatically since Friday. I have spent two and a half years, over two and a half years fighting every single day. Um, you know, speaking weekly, if not daily, with members of Congress, um, with various military leadership, um, the NSC, the embassy, and now suddenly it's, it's just done. It's done. He's home, and, and I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful to not talk to them anymore, so grateful for everything that, that they've done. We're not done. You know, there's still a lot of advocacy that needs to take place. Uh, I believe strongly that the changes made with the SOFA in South Korea need to happen in Japan as well. Um, there's a lot of families not in the military, you know, a lot of wrongful detainee families that need help advocating for themselves. And we're going to take a break. You know, we're just going to enjoy our time as a family. We, ha we need to find our way forward. Right. Um, but once we get a little bit of that, you know, we're going to figure out how we can use what we learned to help others. Uh, Lieutenant, um, do you have any messages for the families of other U.S. citizens wrongfully detained abroad? <sighs> um, take it one meal at a time. That's how I did it. I focused on just making it to the next meal, and then once dinner time, just getting to where I could fall asleep. And for them to know that there are people that love and care about them, you know, I am here today not because of myself, but because of all those that stood behind me. And it is the same for those others that are incarcerated. And I look forward to being that person for them as well. Yeah, I'm thinking of Evan Grishkovich and Paul Whelan right now who are detained unfairly and inappropriately uh, in, in Russia. Different circumstances, uh, but the same, the same pain. Lieutenant Ridge and Brittany Alconis, it's great to see you together. Go play with your kids. Good to, ha good to have you on the show. <laughs> we'll, be back. we'll be right Thanks, back. Thank you so much. I want to get you this story. It means a lot to us. It's been a long road to freedom for him. U.S. Navy Lieutenant Ridge Alconis now released from custody and reunited with his family. He was serving time over a car crash in Japan that killed two people. All told, the Navy officer spent 537 days behind bars the vast majority of them, that was in Japan, and most recently here in the United States for just under a month. Lieutenant Alconis and his wife, Brittany, joins us now. It means a lot for our audience to have a chance to see you, and to see you together brings a lot of smiles to everyone today. We're going to go through it all, but Ridge, tell me about what you remember from those moments after the crash, and what, was, what were you thinking when you first had to go into that prison? Well, first of all, I am still active duty, and so the what we'll discuss today are my opinions alone. Mm -hmm. But from the moment the crash happened, the first thing that I said is I want to take care of these families that were hurt. And that, that sentiment, that remorse that I feel has never wavered and continues today. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how you were feeling right before the crash? Can you describe it for people? I, I was talking to my, the last thing that I remember was talking to my daughter. And after that, the next thing that I remember is the smell of the gas that mm -hmm. deployed from the airbag. Mm -hmm. Everything else is, is 
is fuzzy or I don't remember it all. Right. Were you, I know that Brittany has been amazing, right? She's been your spokesperson, your rock, your lifeline, your connection. Did you know the impact she was having here by being so willing to be public about your case? I, I, I knew, but I, I didn't understand the scope of what of how of how far it reached and coming home and being able to watch all the videos and and read everything that people had written about her was unbelievably humbling to know that someone cared enough about me to put that much effort on my behalf I consistently called her my superhero I nicknamed her Brittany the Bold for all that she's done for me and I could not be luckier to, to have her with me and, and stick by me through this whole thing. Well, your, your love and commitment to each other inspires all of us. Brittany, when you are able to take the children to go and see them, can you describe the children's reaction? Um, so it was, it was kind of fun. Friday morning, uh, we got in the car. It was like any other day. Uh, we went to school. One kid was out of the car, I had one leg out of the car, we got a phone call, and I was told to drive to LA and pick him up. So I yelled at all the kids to get back in the car. They're like, what are we doing? And I said, we're going to get daddy, and they screamed, and they were so excited. Um, when we got there, it was a few hours of waiting. Uh, Ridge's siblings, his parents, nieces and nephews, they all joined us. And the second he walked out those doors, um, they were just elated. I bet. And it's, it's felt like the past year and a half never happened, you know. Well, I hope that is true for you, that you can put this behind you. Ridge, uh, what, do you, what do you plan on doing? Do, I, and I don't know if you can answer this. Do you plan on staying in the Navy? Right now I'm focused on being a good husband, father, brother, and son. Those are my primary responsibilities. I'm working with the Navy to, uh, to reintegrate not only with, with them, but my family as well, and then eventually find a command for me to be at uh, locally here in, in San Diego. After that, you know, I, I, I haven't really thought about, right now we're focused on just figuring out how to be a family again and, and getting everything restarted. Well, we are glad you're home. And thank you for being such a shining example for uh, people everywhere in America as what, what love can do and perseverance. And as you said, Brittany the Bold, indeed. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Wow.